Shalom, Chevre. This is Richard Solomon, and this is the fourth week of our class. And this week we will be exploring some new aspects of the various web tools. You will recall that last week you installed Google Plus Hangout by clicking on this link. And today we are going to invite you to engage in a Google Plus Hangout video conversation with several members of our class, including me, Elaine, and Katrina. Now, I have already created a video tutorial on YouTube on how to engage in a Google Plus Hangout with several people, and you will find that YouTube by clicking on this particular URL. So let me show you what that will look like when you click on this URL. It will look like this. Tutorial on using Google Plus Hangout and there is the YouTube number. So let's find out what the next challenge is for the week. The next challenge for the week is to engage in a video conference with Richard, Elaine, Katrina, or any member of our cohort using Skype. Now, I'm going to assume that you have already installed Skype, which is what you had done last week. So let me get to my Skype account by clicking here. And let's say I want to engage in a video conversation with Elaine. So, in the search box, and by the way, this is the way the search box looks for a Mac computer. A PC may look a little differently. So, I write Elaine's name in here. Elaine Solomon. Oh, and sure enough, here she is. So, let's go and engage in a video call, a brief video call with Elaine Solomon. I click on that. And there is Elaine. And let's see if Elaine can simply say hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Now, I don't know if you can hear Elaine very well. I'll make it a little bit louder. Let me engage in a, another brief conversation with Elaine and say, Elaine, uh, how do you enjoy doing these kinds of uh, tutorials with me? It's a lot of fun, and I'm glad I can help you out. Okay. So, with my particular Mac computer, if I want to terminate the conversation, I just click over here on Hang Up. If I want to add and send uh, messages to people or do screen sharing, something that we'll be discussing later here. If I want to mute my mic, I go here. And, of course, if I want to stop the video... Uh, I go here, so uh, by clicking here, Elaine would not see me, but by clicking on this, she would see me. But right now, I'm going to say goodbye to Elaine, and uh, thank you, Elaine. You're quite welcome. Bye-bye. And I'm going to hang up. All right, so let's find out what the next part of the assignment is. Search for the members of our cohort who have Skype. All right, so let's go back to Skype. Let's go to our contact list. And all you have to do is record the Skype IDs of the people in the cohort, and that's how you will be able to add them to your Skype account. We've actually gone over this before in a previous tutorial, but this is just a reminder. So what is the next challenge? Request that all the members of our cohort be contacts on Skype. And you do that by going into this particular search box and clicking on their names and requesting that they uh, be contacts with you. Okay, and then it says participate in a text conversation in a private Skype community of practice group. All right. So here is an example 
of a private community of practice group that I created. This was one that I created for folks some time ago. They were taking a class with me called Toolbox 2.0-2 Skype Cohort Group, and these are the various people in the group. And if I want to have a conversation with them, and let's say, just simply say, hello, what's new? And I put that in this chat box and hit return. All of the members in the group will be able to see that information. All right. So that is how you go and engage in a text conversation with many different members in our private Skype cohort group. So let's take a look at what the next challenge is. So we participated in a Skype conversation. Let me shut down Skype right now so no one disturbs us. Okay. And what we ought to do next is to obtain a Facebook account by clicking on this particular link. So if you click on this link, you'll get to the place to engage in a, or to activate your Facebook account if you don't have one. Let me show you what that looks like. Here is an example of how you sign up for Facebook, right? You put your name in, last name, etc. So that's pretty simple, and then you just simply sign up by and after you complete all of this information. And I think we have one more task. And the last, oh no, the next to last task is to control your private privacy settings in your Facebook account. This is very, very important. How to control your privacy settings in your Facebook account. Let me show you how you do that. Let's get to my own Facebook account. This is my Facebook account. Okay. And these are various people with whom I interact. Now you see where it says home over here? And you click on this little arrow over here. And we go down to privacy settings. You click that right over here. And here is how you control who can access and engage in a conversation with you. If you want everyone in the world to have access to your Facebook account, you click public. If you want only friends, you click here. If you want to customize your account, you can click here. Now, I'm going to go over this pretty quickly, but I want to show you the choices, how you connect. So if you click on Edit Settings, you can have your friends, or you can have everyone, or friends of friends. Okay? Uh, by the same token, you have other questions. Who can look you up by using email or phone number. You know, I only like uh, certain friends to do that, so that's how it works. And the same goes through with other areas. Uh, who can see your timeline? Uh, if you don't want anyone to see your timeline, you could say no one. Now, I'm not going to go over all of this information. You can do that yourself, but I just want to show you that you have the opportunity to control how many people can access your Facebook account. Now, this there's one thing I would like to share with you, and that's blocking people or blocking apps. You see where it says manage blocking? If you want someone not to contact you when you made them a friend, but you no longer want them to access your account, you just write their name and write their email address. And, uh, or you want to uh, prevent apps or events to uh, be sent to you. This is a very, very important page. So that's how you are able to control your privacy settings. Let me show you that once again. Right over here, privacy settings. And that is how you do that. So I think the last 
question. The last task is how do you invite someone to be your friend on Facebook? So all you do is you write their name in this search box. So if I wanted, let's say, Elaine Solomon, there she is, to be a friend of mine, I just write her name. And if she's listed on Facebook, I click on this and I click I'd like her to be my friend, which she already is. Uh, but if she was not my friend, then I would simply invite her to be my friend. So let's see what we have accomplished. You have already installed Google Plus Hangout. We mentioned that you'll be engaging folks in a conversation using Google Plus Hangout, including myself, Elaine, and Katrina. We have a YouTube demonstrating that. You will engage in a video conference with either Richard, me, Elaine, or Katrina by using Skype, and we demonstrated that. We talked about how to search for members of our cohort on Skype and how to request that those folks be your friends or your contacts on Skype. We demonstrated in the uh, previous um, tutorial on how to add members of Skype to your uh, cohort list. And we demonstrated how to participate in a text conversation in our private Skype community of practice. We then showed you how to obtain a Facebook account, how to control your privacy settings, and invite someone to be your friend. Lots of work to do this week. I hope you find it successful. If not, certainly you can email either me, Elaine, or Katrina. Thank you so much.